Hey guys, and welcome to the monthly celebrations video hop for August. This month I wanted to do just a short sort of explanation intro type thing to my video. Uh, this was a process video that I did on my channel a while ago. It was a scrap lift of a layout that Nicole McGork shared many years ago. Um, I just really liked the way that she was doing a lot of her school pages. And so I chose to scrap the lift this a while ago. And I think that this is sort of what I want to do every year for my kids, um, like school memory type things with their photo. Now, I will say if you saw the original video, there was a different photo here because when I did the layout, I didn't realize that I was actually using his spring photo and I really wanted like the quintessential like photo that they take at the beginning of the year and the one that they use in the yearbook because they're usually, you know, a lot younger and they're a little less beat up and all that. So um, I just went ahead and added this before I started filming just because I had already pulled it out and I wanted to go ahead and update it. So I went and grabbed all my kids' school photos. I think I'm going to go ahead and do my daughter's kindergarten photo. So I have both of their kindergarten ones done. And then I almost want to go ahead and try while I've already got all their photos out. I already have all my school stuff pulled out and go ahead and see if maybe this month I can kind of knock out all of this sort of style layout that I want to do. Um, luckily, as of right now, my daughter only has preschool and kindergarten. My son, I would have to do his preschool first and second grade as far as, you know, their the photos that they take at the beginning of the year. So um, when I did this one, this is a Carrie Bradford cut file. I have all the grades. I'm going to go ahead and keep with this for all of them. I, when I did this, I did not think that I had a large number stamp set. So this, I ended up cutting out numbers on my silhouette and I ended up doing like ink blending for this. And I do like how it turned out. I'm just kind of on the fence about doing it again because it was a little bit difficult to line up. And I was going through a bunch of stuff in my room and I found these, which came with, there's a set of letters too. It came with a really old Lisa Dickinson, something like that. Um, she used to have these layout sketchbooks years and years ago. And one of them came with a set of these like foam stamps and so I went ahead and I thought you could just bend them off ended up crack cracking it pretty bad but it still works I went ahead and did some testing with this to see if it's gonna work and I think if I use um, a pigment ink because you can see when it sits on top of the surface of your stamp you can tell if you've got it inked up really good I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this because it is a lot easier to kind of line up and see where the bottom of your number is hitting. And I do like to use text or graph paper. It's just a lot easier to line up all of this stuff going on. And it's like theme supportive. So I'm thinking that these are about almost the same size. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use these and cross my fingers and hope that they work. Um, if not, I'm probably going to after this go comb maybe Simon Says Stamp or somewhere and see if I can find something um, that's current that I can use especially even like a clear stamp because then if I put it in like a stamp positioner and I mess up I can do it again this is really hard to line up and be able to do it again so that is pretty much my game plan I'm sticking pretty much on theme this month as far as um, I think typically most kids go back to school in August and I mean other than just kind of like random things like school shopping or going to the pool are pretty much all we have for August so I'm kind of just going with what I'm in the mood to tackle because I feel like it's it's just it's easier if you're kind of mentally in this sort of thing than to try to go combing through um my photos from August and see if I can find something else. I would rather go with what I'm in the mood for and kind of what makes sense for me. So I am going to go ahead and start gathering up my stuff and put you guys on fast forward for the rest of the process. So I hope you enjoy. 
Okay, so I chose to start with the notebook pattern paper that I was sort of building everything on top of as far as all my stamping, my title, my photos, all the information and stuff like that. So when I was pulling my supplies, I just went ahead and grabbed my school themed stuff. And then I grabbed my file of Simple Stories Basics is what they call them, where it's sort of these more simple patterns that they sell alongside their collections and typically in my mind it's just like the perfect pack of b-side patterns basically and i a lot of times will end up buying the basics pack even if i don't buy uh -huh. the main collection just because it's what i like um, I like basic patterns and I absolutely love text paper, notebook paper, grid paper, stuff like that. And I especially like it for this format that I, um, like I said, I'm scrap lifting because it does give you a really good way of lining up your stamps, whether it's these giant numbers or the phrases, um, lining up my die cut title and that kind of thing. It just makes it a lot easier to get those items sort of straight and lined up and paired together. And then... I sat there and took a circle stamp and figured out the order that I wanted to do my ink colors in and I was planning on doing like a rainbow color just I couldn't come come up with like a random I guess color order kind of like I did with my son's page that I liked the look of so I ended up going with rainbow because my daughter is obsessed with rainbows, so to me it fit the theme. Like somebody just looking at the page wouldn't necessarily know that. And then even after I sat there and figured all that out, I got distracted because my kids kept walking in and asking me what, you know, what time something was happening. And I ended up sort of losing the pink ink pad and then realizing that I wanted it to be, you know, red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue. So the pink one ended up being the last one and it just kind of ended up on the end as the eight, but I went with it. I did not want to re have to redo all the stamping. I didn't want to have to waste this notebook paper. And so again, I just went with it. I think ideally it would have looked really, really pretty in a rainbow order, but sometimes you just have to go with what happens. And I was really, really happy that these stamps did end up working out. They were almost the exact same size as the numbers that I had die cut with my silhouette on my son's layout. And with that one, I just did like ink. I kind of used it as like a stencil and ink blended it. Um, I will go ahead and post a link to that video below if you want to be able to see that one as well. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty much the same process. And then... I was looking at my stamps and trying to come up with like a cute school themed sort of phrase that I wanted to include and finally I just gave up and said you know what I already came up with one when I did my son's layout I'm just going to use the same one and then when I go to do a different year for him and I come up with a different phrase or a different sort of stamp thing I'll just copy it onto her page as well because why make more work for myself I guess and this whole time, I was super careful with that black Versamark ink. It is amazing with sentiment stamps. It stamps really crisp, really clear. And then right there, I still somehow managed to end up with a black smudge on my page. I made a half-hearted attempt to kind of try to cover it up with like a white gel pen. But the white gel pen wouldn't work. I didn't have like a sanding eraser, so I just said, screw it. I feel like it's fine. Again, you just kind of got to roll with some of the things that you would maybe think of as a mistake or something that you've kind of messed up on on your layout. But when my kids look at this, they're not going to notice that. They're going to see a picture of themselves and they're going to remember what it was like to be in kindergarten. Um, as far as a background page, it I feel like I feel like I should admit this, but I definitely am like a paper hoarder. I need to be less of it's too pretty, I can't use it, and instead tell myself it's so pretty, I have to use it. But when it comes to a background that's going to be 95% covered and you're only going to see a little bit of it, I don't like to waste like my good wood grain paper or like a good like 
school themed B side paper, it just the inner hoarder in me just kind of says no. Um, so I got a little creative when it came to picking out my background paper. I pulled out a Simple Stories paper pad and it was one of their fall collections where it was like best of something where you got like their four best selling patterns for four or five different collections. And so it was that wood grain one that had like a printed design on it, but it, most of it I was covering up anyways. So basically it just looks like it's a brown wood grain paper. And to me it was perfect because I probably wouldn't have used the paper the way it was printed. Like I wouldn't have done a style of layout that would have made that frame look good, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, from there, I just kind of figured out what I wanted to do as far as some borders at the bottom. I think my son, I had three, hers, she ended up with four, um, mostly because I was trying to cover up some of those little elements that were peeking out from the background. And then my son's page, I noticed that I had somehow found a like measuring tape paper strip on his. And so I did want to carry that over and I kind of wanted to be able to include more of the colors that I picked when I was stamping. So already I had like a pink and a red and then that multicolored star stripe that I cut out from a from a pattern. And then this green one I actually pulled from their um, baby collection. That was probably my all-time favorite. And then I used the same chalkboard alphabet one that I had used on his. I have a ton of that particular pattern left over from a class that I had done years ago at a local store here that's now closed. And I kept those because I absolutely, again, I love text patterns and that kind of thing. Um, from there, I went ahead and die cut my title. Um, I will be honest, I hate applying liquid glue to the back of intricate die cuts like this. I know it's probably not like acid free or great for anything, but Spray adhesive in this case is my go-to. It's just really fast, really easy, and it does hold those intricate die cuts. And that bottle seems to last a long time. I tried the Krylon one years ago and it kept clogging. So far, I have had good experience with the, I think it's the Elmer's brand, it looks like a glue stick. It's got to be Elmer's, Elmer's brand, but it doesn't clog and I've had it for a couple years and it just keeps working. But I just did not want to fight with that little tiny bottle right there and try to put liquid glue on the back of everything and then try to get it on there without getting liquid glue everywhere. So like I said, spray adhesive is sort of my jam in that situation. Um, from there, I just started kind of mimicking the places that I had embellished on my son's layout. Um, this particular thing was something that Nicole McGork had done a lot in her layouts where she would sort of stack up different shapes with a vellum layer. Um, I decided to throw in an extra icon from a school theme die cut sheet, which I think is like really old from Jelly Bean Soup. Like now I think they put them in like a die cut pack, but this is from an older one. So it was like a 12 by 12 sheet that you have to punch everything out of, but I again, love it, hoard it barely ever use it. Um, I ended up looking at that and pulling things that went with her, like things that she would have picked. I did blue and green pencils on his layout. So I did red and pink pencils on hers. I, this was about the point where I realized I had kind of put my die cut title a little lower than I intended because I wanted to put the pencils underneath the title. I still ended up doing it. It just was really bugging me that it wasn't like where I specifically wanted them to be but I just was trying to get this finished and to kind of be able to move on to getting some more um some more of these layouts sort of done and checked off of my list and then with his layout I had just found like a stack of books to put in the lower right corner for her I picked that little composition notebook and then a green apple because he had a green apple on his now, that's not to say that these, are, these aren't going to be side by side in an album next to each other where you would notice that. It's more for me and that that's what I like. If I am going to sort of mimic a layout between my two kids, I do like to have 
nods to the other layout, I guess. So here is the completed layout and some detail shots. And again, check the description box below for the video that I did for my son, as well as links to all the other girls participating in this hop. And I will catch you guys in another video shortly.